last session we finished off with the topic of reproduction and we have another important topic which is the continuation of reproduction something called as reproductive health so we have this new chapter reproductive health in which we will talk about contraception how to avoid having a child infertility how is the test tube baby born how are test tube babies created we'll understand that we we'll talk about syphilis gonorrhea and other sexually transmitted diseases and we we'll start today with a very important concept pregnancy placenta parturition and lactation so chalo let's understand what this is pregnancy placenta parturition and lactation pregnancy the condition of carrying one or more embryos in the uterus is called pregnancy or gestation agar a lady is having in her uterus one or more fetuses one or more embryos and that is called pregnancy or gestation human pregnancy lasts for 266 days from fertilization of the egg or 280 days from the start of the last menstrual cycle so fertilization se leke child birth parturition tak the time period is 266 days which is called as the gestation period or the pregnancy period by the way when did fertilization take place in the ovary menstruation takes place and it starts menstrual cycle on the 14th day ovulation takes place and the egg goes the goes in the fallopian tube and gets fertilized so 266 days plus 14 days in other words 266 plus 14 that is the 280 days from the start of the last menstrual cycle is the gestation period So suppose a lady comes to you in February, and she says that I have missed my periods. You do her HCG test, urine test, and you find she is HCG positive. You do sonography, and you find that there is a fetus and embryo developing inside her uterus. Uh, what will you ask her? You ask her, Madam, when did you last have your periods? she says i had my periods on the 1st of january so 1st of january she had her period that means on around the 14th of january she must have had ovulation and fertilization add to it a total of 266 days in other words from 1st of january her last menstrual period add 280 days so january 1st till like 280 days is approximately 9 months and 10 days so you will tell her that is around the 10th of october is your expected date of delivery your child will be born approximately the 10th of october so what is the gestation period calculated as 280 days from the start of the last menstrual cycle pregnancy for purposes of understanding is divided into three stages three phases of three months each which are called as trimester to hum log ko school mein 6 mahine ka semester hota tha aise hi pregnancy mein 3 mahine ka trimester hota hai so in 9 months you have three trimesters of three months each the first trimester is the time of the most radical change for both the mother and the embryo so first trimester can the maximum changes hote hain in the first trimester the fetus start absorbing nourishment from the mother's endometrium and starts undergoing rapid changes in it and it is the first trimester which is the main period of organogenesis 
babies all organs develop as early as the first three months maximum organogenesis takes place in the first trimester and a small little baby develops inside it has got heart blood vessels nervous system digestive system reproductive system everything develops at the end of the first three months itself as maximum organogenesis takes place genesis making of organo organs making of organs is maximum at the end of the first trimester eight weeks later the major structure of the adult are present in the rudimentary form and the embryo is called as a fetus so by eight weeks all systems have developed and the baby is called as a fetus before eight weeks it is called as an embryo after eight weeks it is called as a fetus how long is the fetus the fetus is only 5 cm long so can you imagine 5 cm ka a cute little baby develop ho jata hai just 5 cm but all the organ systems have already developed inside only 5 cm and mother ke andar bhi bahut sare changes hote hain because of high amount of estrogen and progesterone the estrogen progesterone will help in the reproductive system to develop the maternal part of the placenta grows the placenta starts developing at the point of implantation do we remember we have syn cytotropoblast which is for chorionic villi and cytotropoblast starts forming the placenta so placenta has started developing the uterus becomes larger uterus size se thoda bada ho jata hai ovulation and menstrual cycle stop ovulation stops the menstrual cycle stops so estrogen progesterone are high the uterus becomes slightly larger and the ovulation cycle or ovarian cycle stop and the menstrual cycle will stop that is the first trimester maximum organogenesis is in the first trimester what is the length of the baby 5 cm the second trimester ke andar uterus grows enough for the pregnancy to become obvious the fetus is very active and grows to 30 cm long so fetus 30 cm ek foot jitna bada ho jata hai so it become quite big Uh, how much was the length of the baby in first trimester 5 cm at the end of second trimester 6 months later the baby is 30 cm long so from 5 cm to 30 cm and hormone levels stabilize and cg secretion becomes less who was maintaining the corpus luteum in the first trimester first 3 months the developing fetus had secreted hcg and human chorionic gonadotropin maintains the corpus luteum for the first 3 months but by the end of 6 months hcg secretion becomes less and the corpus luteum degenerates and in the meantime the placenta is fully developed end of first trimester mein teen mahine ke baad placenta is fully developed and the placenta starts producing estrogen and progesterone so who was maintaining endometrium endometrium is maintained by estrogen and progesterone who maintains endometrium in the first trimester first three months corpus luteum under action of hcg given by the fetus but after three months are over the fetus stops giving hcg corpus luteum will be generated but in the meantime placenta is fully developed and placenta starts secreting its own estrogen and progesterone so placenta ka estrogen progesterone maintain hone lagta hai and placenta is fully developed at the end of the first trimester and then we have third trimester third trimester ke andar kya hota hai
during the third or the final trimester, the fetus grows to about 3 to 4 kg in weight and 50 cm in length. So, first trimester is 5 cm. Second trimester is 30 cm. Third trimester is 50 cm. To be more precise, 54 cm. And the fetus grows to a weight of 3 to 4 kg. So, 50 to 54 cm in length, 3 to 4 kilo ka ho jata hai fetus and the uterus expands around it, uterus becomes huge and massive protrusion of the uterus takes place in the third trimester, the growing uterus will exert a lot of pressure on the urinary bladder and behind of the rectum. So, bladder ke upar pressure aadhaega means the bladder cannot stretch to accommodate urine. So, bladder mein urine accommodation possible nahi hai. Agar kidney se thoda bhi urine bladder mein aata hai, the lady will get a frequency of maturation. She gets desire of maturation. She goes to the washroom many times in a day. She has frequent urination. And the huge uterus creates a lot of pressure on the rectum and it causes difficulty in defecation. In other words, constipation takes place and all women in the third trimester severely complain of constipation. And while she is sleeping at night, the huge uterus exerts a lot of pressure on the back and it creates spasms in the back. Backside में pain होने लगता है, काफी back muscle के अंदर problems होते हैं, pain होता है, spasms होने लगते हैं. So that is what is there as the three changes of the three trimesters. Then we have the placenta. The placenta is a temporary organ formed in eukaryon, that is placental mammals. Mammals are viviparous. Mammals have in them placenta and having a placenta is called as eutherian. Eutherians are placental mammals and the placenta is the only organ and animal formed of tissues derived from two different individuals, the fetus and the mother. So placenta is one unique organ which means mother ke bhi blood vessels hai, और फीटस के जो ब्लड वेसल्स है तो दो अलग-अलग जनरेशन के ब्लड वेसल्स एंड टिश्यूज एक दूसरे के साथ मिक्स होते हैं इन द बैक कॉल द प्लेसेंटा द प्लेसेंटा सर्व्स टू ब्रिंग द फीटल एंड मैटरनल ब्लड क्लोज एनफ टू परमिट द एक्सचेंज ऑफ मटेरियल बिटवीन द टू प्लेसेंटा में मैटरनल ब्लड वेसल्स एंड अम्बिलिकल कॉर्ड से प्लेसेंटा में फीटस के ब्लड वेसल्स और इन क्लोज कांटेक्ट विद ईच अदर और उनके बीच में एक्सचेंज ऑफ मटेरियल्स होता है एंड अ फुल्ली फॉर्म्ड ह्यूमन प्लेसेंटा इज डिस्क शेप अबाउट 4 सेंटीमीटर इन थिकनेस एंड 18 सेंटीमीटर इन डायमीटर सो इफ वी लुक एट द प्लेसेंटा ऑफ द फीटस दिस इज द प्लेसेंटा एंड इट इज अ डिस्क शेप स्ट्रक्चर 4 cm in thickness and 18 cm in diameter. So this is the placenta as we have seen. It is what has umbilical cord coming in the center. And umbilical cord is connected to the fetus. In the umbilical cord you have umbilical artery which brings in blood and umbilical veins which carry away the blood. There is one umbilical artery and there are two umbilical veins. So artery one hoti hai and veins two hoti hai, reddish brown color and develop at the end of the third one. Peen mehne ke baad ke placenta fully develop ho jata. So beautiful disc shaped structure, it has a weight of around 500 grams. 500 gram ka hota hai placenta, half a kg in weight, full of blood vessels. 
both fetus blood vessels and maternal blood vessels are found in this bag called as the placenta. The placenta consists of chorion only, hence it is called chorionic placenta. Placenta is derived from which layer? Chorion and is called chorionic placenta. It has got allantoid, which is small, allantoid cavity. Sir, we have placenta or placenta ke saath saath we have allantoid. So sir, ye hai placenta which is attached to endometrium. And there is another bag which is called as allantoid which is also attached to endometrium. So, ये है umbilical cord and placenta और यहाँ पर है allantoid and the stalk called as allantoid stalk. Allantoid brings in waste material from the fetus into the mother. So, what will placenta do? Brings oxygen and nutrition from the mother into the fetus. So oxygen and nutrition come from mother into the fetus via the placenta or baby ke body mein banta hai waste product, urea. So humare body mein bhi our waste products are urea, fetus mein bhi urea banta hai, urea passes out through allantoid back into the mother and allantoid behaves as the primitive urinary bladder of the fetus. So fetus ka urinary bladder kaun hai? That back called allantoid is the urinary bladder of the fetus. It will excrete away the waste product from the mother via the back called the allantoid. And you have a large number of branching villi from the vascular chorionic placenta penetrate into corresponding pits which are called as crypts formed in the uterine wall. So, placenta may say we have villi and those villi, I am sure you remember, are called as chorionic villi. So, fetus ke andar placenta hota hai, usme se chorionic villi hote hai aur mummy ke endometrium me chorionic villi go and Lock into pits which are called as crypts. So, endometrium me kaun hai? Crypts. Endometrium has in it crypts. And placenta se under kaun ja raha hai? Chorionic villi. So, chorionic villi fit into the crypts of the endometrium. Endometrial crypts ke under villi ja ke atak ja ke hai. And, sir, you have Placenta when fully formed by the third one is reddish brown in color and in the placenta fetal blood comes very close to maternal blood and thus permits the exchange of material between the two. So, mummy or baby ke fetal ke blood vessels in the nazdik mein ajate hai from mother's blood will pass in nutrition, food. Glucose, amino acids, proteins, lipids, water, minerals, salts, vitamins, hormones, antibodies and oxygen pass from maternal blood into the fetal blood. So, sugar, amino acids, protein, lipids, hormones, minerals, ye sub fetus ke andar Maternal blood is a fetus blood ke andar pass ho ta hai. And fetus will utilize it, produce urea and carbon dioxide which will then pass via that back called allantoid and via allantoid pass into the mother and is being excreted by mother's body. So sir, who is bringing in nourishment and oxygen? Placenta. Who is taking away urea and waste product? Allantoids. And thus the placenta serves as a nutritive, respiratory and excretory organ of the fetus. It brings in nourishment, 
it brings in with nutrients, it brings in oxygen, so it is respiratory, and it takes away urea, so it is the excretory organ of the fetus. The continuous uptake of oxygen by fetal blood is ensured by the difference in the affinity of oxygen between fetal and maternal hemoglobin. So, maternal hemoglobin, one maternal hemoglobin binds with four oxygen atoms and one fetal hemoglobin binds with six oxygen atoms. So, maternal hemoglobin can bind with four oxygen atoms, fetal hemoglobin can bind with six oxygen atoms. So, when in the placenta, maternal blood and fetal blood vessels come close to each other, so, dono mein hemoglobin hai, who has got greater affinity for oxygen? Fetal hemoglobin, six oxygen atoms. Compared to maternal hemoglobin, four oxygen atoms. And fetal hemoglobin and fetal RBCs, which have in them the hemoglobin, because fetal RBCs have greater affinity, all the oxygen from maternal RBC and maternal hemoglobin will go into fetal RBC as fetal hemoglobin. And that is the way continuous supply of oxygen is given to the fetus. Now, maternal and fetal blood vessels are not in direct contact in the placenta. So, fetus or mummy ke blood vessels are in close contact and exchange takes place. Are mother and fetus's blood in direct contact? Can mother's blood enter into fetus? No. Mother's blood comes in near contact and oozes out, lymph goes out, lymph will carry with it sugar, oxygen and enter into the fetus. So that is near contact. But you don't have a direct contact between maternal blood and fetal blood. Why not sir? Uh, if mummy ka blood fetus mein aaya, sabse pehle, the two may be incompatible. Mother's blood group is different, fetus's blood group is different and if there is a mixing of maternal and fetal blood, mother's RBCs will enter into fetus and sir, this is incompatible blood group. If the two blood group is not safe, then sir, mummy ke wronged RBCs will enter into the fetus and that will cause severe problems to the fetus. If we do erythroblastosis fetalis. The mother's RBCs will start rupturing because of child's WBC. Child's WBC will attack mother's RBC as foreign cells. And erythroblastosis fetalis can happen because of mismatched blood group. So, it's clear blood contact directly. Secondly, mother's blood pressure is very high. Every lady during pregnancy has pregnancy induced hypertension, high blood pressure. So, PIH, pregnancy induced hypertension or pregnancy induced high blood pressure is there and that pressure of the mother's blood is too much. So, what zada force the blood fetus ke blood vessels mein aega? Fetal blood vessels may rupture because mummy ka blood pressure was zada hai. Fetus ke blood pressure ke comparison mein, agar blood wo speed ke andar aega, it will cause the fetal capillaries to rupture. And mother may be infected. If mother is infected, the infection would go directly into the fetus. So, it is not that mummy ke blood vessels or fetal blood vessels ke beech mein direct contact nahi hai, so infection cannot pass. Not given in your books, but there are seven layers between the mother's and fetus's blood vessels in the placenta or saat saat layer ke andar everything will get filtered. Bacteria, microorganisms, everything gets filtered and what goes into the fetus is sterilized blood. Clean blood containing no microorganisms. So like a mask, we 
लोग जैसे मास्क पहनते कोरोना के अगेन वैसे ही प्लेसेंटा के अंदर सात मास्क है सेवन लेयर आते हैं विच विल फिल्टर अवे ऑल द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड क्लीन स्टेरलाइज ब्लड एंटर्स इनटू द फीटर्स व्हाट इज द प्लेसेंटा सिक्रेट सर प्लेसेंटा गिव्स आउट वेरियस हार्मोन्स namely it gives out human chorionic gonadotropin that is in the first trimester to maintain corpus luteum along with hcg it gives out human carfentyl lactogen hpl estrogen and progesterone so so hcg hpl human carfentyl lactogen estrogen and progesterone hpl Human placenta lactogen are given in your works, but you may remember fetus will give out HPL via placenta. HPL goes in the blood, or mummy ke body me, jo bhi fats hai, un fats ko todke usme se sugar banata hai, and that sugar will now pass via placenta into fetus, and the fetus will get sugar supply. So. Suppose the mother is starving. She is starving. She is not eating. So no problem. If her mummy is not eating, then the baby will get sugar supply. Every lady has got a lot of fats in her body, and placenta starts giving HPL. HPL acts on the fats in her body, breaks down fats, and keeps on giving fats into sugar, and keeps on maintaining a constant sugar supply into the fetus. Who breaks down fats into sugar and gives the sugar supply to the fetus? HPS, human placental lactogen. So you have HCG, you have human placental lactogen, estrogen, and progesterone. And at the later stages of pregnancy, a hormone called relaxin is produced by the ovary as well as by the placenta. So ovary and placenta give out a hormone called relaxin. That is in the ninth month of pregnancy. And what will relaxin do? Do you all remember pelvic cavity? We have sacral and two hip bones. Sacral and two hip bones. The two hip bones and sacral form pelvic cavity, and the reproductive organs are in the pelvic cavity. So the two hip bones are anteriorly fused by a cartilage called pubic symphysis. I hope you remember all of you. Two hip bones. ये है, ये है sacrum, ये है दो hip bones और दोनों hip bones के बीच में बनती है pelvic cavity and here there is a cartilage which is called as Pubic symphysis. So, what is this cartilage called as? Pubic symphysis. And pubic symphysis cartilage is now acted upon by relaxin. Relaxin acts on the pubic symphysis cartilage and stretches the pubic symphysis. What will happen if pubic symphysis stretches? As pubic symphysis stretches. The diameter of the pelvic cavity will increase, and as the diameter of pelvic cavity increases, more surface area is available for the fetus to pass out. So, as the pubic symphysis stretches under action of relaxin hormone, the diameter of the pelvic cavity will increase, and the fetus can easily pass out outside, and parturition will take place. So five hormones you may remember: HCG, HPL, estrogen, progesterone, and relaxin are given by the placenta. In addition, during pregnancy, the level of other hormones like estrogen, progesterone increase, also cortisol, prolactin, and thyroxine levels of the mother will increase. So, our mummy ka prolactin kyu padega? Prolactin will help in deposition of fats, so breast will enlarge. Why should prolactin deposit fats during pregnancy? So that the same fats can be broken down and converted into mother's 
milk. So mother's milk can be made once the child has been delivered and parturition takes place. Prolactin throughout pregnancy deposits fats in the breast and post parturition prolactin breaks down fat and converts her into milk which is then given up. And also thyroxine and cortisol. Sir, thyroxine and cortisol, thyroxine given by thyroid gland and cortisol given by adrenal gland break down sugar and convert it into ATP. So thyroxine and cortisol break sugar into ATP. Abhi sir, child ke body mein sugar to ja hai. But fetus ka thyroid gland to develop hi nahi hua hai. So sir, how will fetus break down sugar into ATP? Mummy, mother, thyroid gland will enlarge. Her adrenal gland will enlarge and you will have lot of thyroxine and lot of cortisol given by the mother. Both thyroxine and cortisol enter via placenta into the fetus and fetus ke andar mummy ka thyroxine or mummy ka cortisol will break down sugar into ATPs and supply nourishment for the fetus. And Third, in human being, after one month of pregnancy, embryo's heart is formed. So, baby ka heart kap banta hai at the end of one month. And if you do sonography, sir, and you see on a sonography computer screen, you can see fetus ek dam chota hai and one small dot. Tak, 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 tak. That's the heart of the fetus developed by one month beating very fast, 150 beats per minute. So, for short as a heart flickering and 150 times it flickers in a minute, fetus heart rate is 150 beats per minute. After the child is born, the heart rate will become less and when we become grown up, then our heart rate reduces to 72 beats per minute. So our heart rate is 72 beats per minute, but the fetus ka heart rate is 150 beats per minute and when is the embryo's heart fully developed sir? by the end of first month. Eight minute the heart developed. At the end of the second month, the fetus develops lips and digits. So in the second month, the fetus comes to the heart and fingers come to the heart. एक महीने में हाथ बन जाता है, दो महीने के अंदर हाथ पैर और उंगलियां आ जाती हैं। The fingers and digits develop by end of second month. At the end of third month, 12 weeks later, first trimester later, all the major systems are fully developed. Limbs, external organs, everything is developed. So first trimester may be, baby is only 5 centimeters, but its heart develops, limbs, digits, nervous system, excretory system, digestive system, everything develops by the end of first trimester, but the baby is only 5 centimeters in length. And the first trimester ke andar, ye sab hone ke baad, the first movement of the fetus and appearance of hair on the head are observed during the fifth month. So second trimester ke andar, paanch mahine ke baad, baby ke sar pe hair development ho jate hai and you find the baby moving. So movements are seen at the end of the fifth month and the baby starts kicking in the mother's uterus. So at the end of the fifth month, the baby is actually alive and kicking as body movements start by the end of the fifth month. So yaar rakna, heart develops by end of first month and the baby starts moving at the end of the fifth month. And by the end of 24 weeks, second trimester ke baad, the body is covered with fine hair. Body ke upar hair a jate hai. Eyelids separate and eyelashes are formed. So baby ke eyelids separate ho jate hai, eyelashes ho jate hai at the end of second trimester. And you can see everything beautifully. You do sonography. Aaj kal itna advanced sonography aaya hai. You can see you have a 
four dimensional sonography means you can see the baby in 3d and you can hear the sounds of the baby so baby ke sounds aane lagte hai and three dimensional four dimensional to be specific you can see the baby four dimensionally its spatial features are seen its hands are seen its legs are seen uh, as a matter of fact you can know by a sonography if there is a penis it's a male child or if there's no penis it's a female child so sonography mein fetal sex bhi maloom pad sakta hai of course you never ever disclose the sex to the parents medically it is not allowed but you can do sonography and find out all these beautiful developments take place in the fetus so now child is perfectly developed how will the child get delivered out how will parturition take place will have a small gap year and will come back to doing parturition and lactation Mm, yeah.